Brand new from Redivis is a HA1 UV model. This is a dual band radio that they sent me. It includes NOAA weather channels and a few other really cool features. We're going to look at it today. Once again, thank you to Redivis for sending me this radio. It was just released on their website about four days ago at the time of this recording, and they have given me some coupon codes to share with you guys. This is their website right here. It's regularly a $60 radio, $59.95, and I will put these in the description below, but they have discount codes for Amazon USA, Amazon Europe, and eBay. So I'll put the links in the description below. They also have discounts for their own website, which is what I'm showing you here, redivis.com. The discount code on their own website is HA1UV10. For Amazon USA and Europe, it's HA1UV10A. And on eBay, it's HA1UV10E. I will put links to everything along with the codes in the description below, but you can see they're in stock right now. Kind of a good looking display on this radio. It is IP... 67 waterproof sub ptt that means it has two ptt buttons 2800 milliamp hour battery it does have USB C charging 1.77 inch color screen you can see that right here we're going to go to the overhead i'm going to show you guys what it looks like on the bench right here so this is it right there it's got the ptt button right there obviously i had it horizontal but that did key the local repeater and then that opens up the squelch this button here turns on the FM radio. It's got an FM radio receiver as well. So that, I don't know where it says sub PTT, but I'm not sure what that means. Maybe you can program one of these to be a, a second PTT button. So this is the face of the radio there. You can easily switch back and forth between the top and the bottom band by pressing the star button right here. Change it to single view or dual view. And if you hold that down, it locks the screen like that. Good. And then the menu's got, menu's pretty easy to use. I, I programmed that repeater that we saw a minute ago fairly simply by just going into channel right there and then you choose vfo a or b so you can program vf it's it's calling vfo and vfo vfo a and vfo b channels you can program channel one for memory and whatnot so you go to vfo a you can name the channel change the bandwidth change the receive and the transmit frequency set the ctcss tone Squelch level, transmit power, transmit permission set, signaling system, scan list, emergency list, talk around and reversal, Vox enabled, and that's it. So 13 different options inside of that right there. There we go on that one. And then you can switch back and forth to, I think in order to, I think you hold down this. Right, so now it's in channel mode right there. You can see channel mode right there channel 2 and we hold down the exit button it switches back to vfo vfo 1 but you'll notice down the the bottom band the sub band is still in channel 1 so you can be in channel mode in one band and vfo mode in the other band and switch that one to vfo mode so now your vfo mode for both bands back to channel mode for that band and back to vfo mode for that band so you can switch them back and forth kind of like you want to there that's kind of a neat way to do it and then we key it this up here this is the local ULIS repeater that I have talked about in the past and said this is, if you are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, key up the local ULIS, ULIS repeater. When I'm at home, I'm usually monitoring. When I'm driving around the area, I'm monitoring as well. KC5H, WB testing. And all that noise you're hearing is stuff here in the shack. Repeater challenge, guys, is still ongoing. Still ongoing. A gentleman won a IC2730A last month in January. I don't know what this uh, this video should post in February, I think. It's still going. Key up your local repeaters and send me a log. So this the side of the radio here has the cover for the speaker mic with the with the knob on it there that to tighten it down for waterproofing. It's got the channel selector knob here, volume selector there. This right here, that doesn't seem to do anything. Huh. That's probably programmable in the software. I haven't even looked at the software yet. SMA female on the body, SMA male on the antenna itself. It's a pretty beefy looking antenna. Pretty stocky looking antenna. I kind of like that antenna. It's not, it's not flimsy at all, so that's good. We've got USB-C charging right there. Comes with a, a base for the radio right there. You set it on the desktop. You can uh, charge it with the, with the base right there. But, you know, I mean, it's USB-C. Who cares? The uh, belt clip attaches to the body of the uh, radio itself, not on the 
the battery. So I like that going around here just like that. So that is, uh, that is what the radio looks like. We're going to do a power test on this radio, but first let me tell you about today's sponsor, which is Ham Live. If you've ever run a net or participated in a ham radio net, check out ham.live. Link is in the description below, as well as the interview I did with Sean, the creator of ham.live. You can track all your logins over the internet. It is multi-platform, works on anything with a browser. Windows, Linux, Mac, whatever. And people can check in, they can chat over the internet, you can see where people are from, and it really enhances the goal and the focus of your net and the ability to reach out to more people. So check out ham.live, link in the description, and thank you HamLive for sponsoring the channel. Okay, so we're gonna go over here to this MFJ849 meter. I've got the top band on 146.52 and I got the bottom band on uh, 441.0. You can see right there. So it does have three power settings. It's kind of weird to get in there. You go into channel and you choose the VFO A or B. And then inside of there is transmit power. And we've got three settings in there, low, medium, and high. A little out of focus because the meter is in focus. But we're going to test it on high power on the, four, uh, on the two meters and on the 440 band. So high power on 146.52. Okay, we're getting about five, almost six watts right there. You can see that. Oh, and it's transmitting on 140, <laughs> uh, one PL tone 110.9 there too. That, that's from the last one. KC5 HWB testing. Going into a dummy load, so not going to really hear anybody. And then we're going to switch it back down to the bottom band. Down there, 441.0. King up, we're going to get about 4 watts right there. So that is what we're getting for power test. That's exactly what it advertises. Four watts on VHF, five watts on, uh, I'm sorry, five watts on VHF, four watts on UHF. It's exactly what it advertises, so I can't complain with that. I didn't test the lower outputs because it's probably somewhere around three watts for the medium power and about anywhere from half a watt to one watt for the low power. But this is a neat radio. It's, uh, like I said, it's only 60 bucks. There is a, di a discount code in the description. It's definitely good and waterproof. It feels good in the hand when you're carrying it around. So USB-C rechargeable, which is what everybody is wanting nowadays. So check out the links in the description below. Once again, thank you to Red Evis for sending this to me. If you guys want other videos and other testing on this, I'm going to carry it around for a few weeks, maybe a month, something like that. See how it works. See how I like it. And uh, maybe we'll do a follow-up video soon. 73 guys. Thanks for watching today.